Do it. So am I doing Mudita Heart then? Yeah, go so, ahead. Okay, I'm Mudita Heart. Yeah. And then... Pure PhD. Okay, and we're talking about Spider-Man. We don't know, no, the, no. We don't know what the title of the movie is. The homecoming, they, No Way Home. Homecoming far, 3, far, I guess. Far, homecoming far, 3. Far, homecoming 3. Across the Zendaya one. <laughs> the Zendaya universe. <laughs> and Ned. Zendaya and Ned Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's already it, been like an Infinity War in between these Spider-Man movies. And then now there's like into now, the Spider-Verse. Now there's a multiverse. There's been a lot going on. And then this, somehow this is like, somehow these are still these three Spider-Man movies in between all this stuff going on. Okay, so we don't have the Spider-Man from uh, the cartoon, the Spider Into the Spider-Verse cartoon, right? Yeah, Into the Spider-Verse is its own multiverse movie with yeah. like 12 Spider-Man in it. Which I thought was a mess. But now this one has three Spider-Man in it. I don't think Which that's is less a huge. That's I don't think that's a huge spoiler to say that this movie has three Spider-Man in it. This is the premise of the movie that I think everyone pretty much knows. Sorry, probably should, but I'll put spoiler. Alert, don't worry about it. Okay, but it's just to let you know. It's the, 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 basic, movie, it's the, the movie basic. made a billion dollars. That's why everyone watched it. Yeah, it made a billion dollars. It's probably people thirty years from now like. Wait, I don't watch it yet. Like, yeah. no one spoiled that for me. It's like someone revealing to me that someone is someone in Psycho. It's two weeks in. It's made a billion dollars. Yeah. People, we still saw it in a theater where people were still kind of packed. Yeah. During it was an indie Omicron, theater because, like, Omicron, no one in else. An, in an indie theater during Omicron. It was the only movie this whole year movie. that made a billion dollars. Only movie that, it's the biggest pandemic smash hit. That's <laughs> part of the achievement. There you go. Achievement. That's where we've gotten to. <laughs> yeah, um. So a good movie, <laughs> very commercial success. Yeah, there you go. Um, and yeah, um, it's about these three Peter Parkers, and like I don't do, even know. Do, 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 do. They're just walking around. <laughs> hey, I'm Peter Parker. I'm Peter Parker. I'm it's Peter the Parker too. Where they're all pointing at each other. <laughs> oh, you, you, you. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, they. they it's Ed, Ed, and Eddie, except it's Pete, Pete, and Petey. Pete, Pete, and Petey. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess we'll start off from the beginning and go, well, anyway, what are your general impressions and then we'll go chronologically in the movie. That sounds about right. Okay, um, so general impressions, yeah. I watched it twice, actually. Um, you watched the first it already? Time, the first time was actually a lot better. The second, okay. the second time, that, that start was really rough, so I don't know how to grade it. Okay. But like, it got better as the movie went along. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, that's your assessment. You yeah. liked it better as it went along. Yeah. I watched... Th this was my first time watching it, and I watched it in a the theater. I didn't watch it bootleg or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, so, <laughs> I don't... Or... Not... <laughs> <laughs> uh, however one may have attempted to watch the movie legally by uh, legit means and whatnot. Um, whoever may be doing that. Um but, uh, I don't know, everybody. <laughs> Twirling my mustache. Um, but, uh... <laughs> You're one of those villains in, in the movie. From one of those alternate universes where that's allowed. This is a crime, you know, as they say in the big thing before you watch the movie. Anyway... They don't even have that, yeah. They don't even do that anymore. <laughs> anyway. Um, but I watched it in the theater. I enjoyed it a lot. But I gotta say, going into this movie, there are a lot of gaps. One, I did not watch the Amazing Spider-Man <laughs> Spider-Man movies. So I kind of had to piece together all those characters and stuff, and like Gwen Stacy and stuff like that. I had to figure that out. And they, I guess that watching this movie spoiled those movies for me a little bit. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, that's okay. I don't mind it because I don't view it as that much of a loss. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then, uh, um, and then I, also, I, also, I watch all of them on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For yeah, the most yeah. Part, outside I, of like some yeah. TV shows. I also did not watch the second to uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man movie, No Way Home. I think I watched it. And I don't remember anything about it. And I, I don't remember liking it. <laughs> I didn't watch it. Uh, it was right after Endgame. I didn't watch it. And apparently this follows right from that. But basically at the very beginning of this, it leads into this. And, uh, yeah, it's, that's my impression of it, is what I understand. I Me don't too, because like, I don't remember the second film after I watched it. <laughs> I barely like, remember Jake Gyllenhaal was in it. 
I mean, involved in this whole this thing. Like, oh, he betrayed DC because he was originally supposed to be the Batman Begins Batman, but like, yeah, so you know, it was Quentin Beck for some odd reason. Just because whatever. So that he used to be, he, my understanding is that Mysterio is a big deal. <laughs> And that's all I know about that second movie. I don't, I don't, I don't really all. remember anything else about the movie. There's drones. Oh my gosh, drones, Mysterio, Magic Mysterio Man. That's a. I, I don't know anything. So I feel like those they, Given those things, everything else, I follow all the Marvel Cinematic stuff. I've seen all the Tobey Maguire movies. I feel like that was enough for me to kind of piece together what was going on. So in I was movie. confused. Like this, this is a big spoiler. Not big spoiler, but it's like later on in the film. Yeah. But I'm gonna mention it now before I forget. Okay. They mentioned like. Oh, I met this purple alien in space or something. Yeah. I thought he was talking about Quentin Beck and not Thanos. <laughs> no, they're talking Cause, about that. Because like, because because there's so much to keep track of. Yeah. Like, they don't you don't see Thanos? It's not visually there; it's just in dialogue. Yeah, there's a lot of cute scenes where like all the Spider Men are talking to. Are each other. There's like fifty films like between these universes. There's all the Spider Men talking to each other about like, oh, what was it like in your universe? What was it like in your universe? <laughs> And, like, that was one of the scenes where they were talking about, like, you know, I, I met a space alien. Well, I never got to go into space. You went into space. So that was cute. They did their... They did, you gotta get those jokes in there. It's fun. This is a funny line so, about and the Avengers, and they're, and they're, which bonding. I'll get back to it later, yeah. The bonding's pretty good, yeah. So the bonding's good. I, I, it's all, like, a lot of... It feels like kind of fan service but they do it well. I felt like it's, it's very story-related. The chemistry is good. The chemistry is there. Yeah. It also serves the story because the characters are bonding before, like, all And, like, they lost happening. this guy, that person, that person. They're all bonding over their shared experiences being, like, different versions of Peter Parker because yeah. they have to keep telling the same story, <laughs> which is basically the kind yeah, of Yeah, there's, a, there's movie. a thing I have about that. Yeah. There's a thing I have about that. It's not, I guess, the movie, but just, like... There's creativity issues. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I guess, like, where do we want to go from here? Do we just want to go chronologically, or do we want to still kind of talk about, like, overall structural things about the uh, Can we go chronologically, but skip the whole beginning prior to what causes the crossover? Not quite that, but, like... Why? Okay. Because I, I just I get have... so annoyed, and, like, I don't feel like I'll... It'll be pleasant for me to talk about it. Like, um... I don't really understand, but you can do whatever you want, I guess. Like, I'll roll with it. I'll just put this. Like, uh... Maybe from Doc Ock onward. Do you mean, like... When he gets introduced. Uh, okay. Do you want to talk... So, do you want to avoid all the stuff that involves, like... Him going to Doctor Strange and stuff like that, or everything before that, or whatever. I think that's certain extent because I, I was I was really annoyed with that part of the film. <laughs> Are you annoyed? Okay, sh- can I talk about that a little bit? Like, Go ahead, just, yeah, like, yeah. What I remember you talking about that. I you, okay. maybe you should talk about. Talk about I don't know. I could about describe it. that premise. Okay, yeah. The premise of that sets off the events of this, which I think I understand why, because it's annoying because <laughs> he's being immature. Yeah, is uh, like maybe it's really hard for a young person to be immature about this, and then like. Maybe it's kind of like a bad reason for setting up the whole events of this movie. The, the, because, the, like, yeah. in Endgame, like, 50% of the whole population got wiped out. He's like, oh, people know Spider-Man. That's the worst thing ever. Like, so, yeah, the, the basic premise thing that sets off this movie is that at the end of the second movie, I didn't even see it, apparently, it's revealed that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. And then this causes Peter Parker's life to spin out of control because everyone knows who he is. His friends get involved and no, and they get taken down too. They get like not canceled, but like everyone knows who they are. His family gets involved. They don't get into MIT or whatever. And then, oh, or no, it's, and then, it's, my, it's my worst nightmare. I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, go I cannot go to MIT, man. So, I'm gonna lose myself. So, so then, this is so them not being able to go to MIT is, it's what, causes, it's my life. is what causes Peter Parker to decide to go to Doctor Strange to say, Hey, I need you to cast a magic spell that causes the whole world to change, <laughs> the whole universe, the not even the world, the whole universe, the whole universe to change. Because this I case, like, like, Thanos is, like, long lost time rumors who Spider-Man is. Yeah, I mean, like, given, like, how... It does feel, like, pretty out of character for, like, you know, pretty much every other Spider-Man has to deal with some version of, like, either keeping their secret identity and suffering from that, or having some other identity come out and then, like, suffering the consequences of that. But, like, this one, he, like, tries to avoid the consequences, and then they just go with it, and then it sets up the premise, and then that's... I could see why that would be annoying. 
But that kind of sets the things in motion for this movie. And then, it, furthermore, when he does the spell... He keeps he's annoying fucks, him? He fucks like, up the spell. He's like, that's strange. Don't do that. Don't do that. So, so not only does he, like, not allow this... Cause the, he requests the spell to be cast by Doctor Strange. He doesn't want to cast he, it. He, he messes up the spell by asking more and more and more and more. And then screwing up the spell a million times. And then, and then that's what causes all the multiverses to collapse. And then that's so, so the premise of the movie where all these characters are showing up and stuff. Maybe Spider-Man should be the villain of the next Mo Avengers film, where he just, like, tells Doctor Strange to, to cast a spell, but he's like, no, I want this spell specifically, then everything gets screwed up. You mean, like, there's, like, an evil version of these characters that, like, no, no, I mean, like or something? No, I mean, like, it's, it's like, normal Spider-Man, at least from this movie, not the other two, which he's not that bad in. He's pretty good in the other two films, even. But like this film is like, that's strange, I need you to cast a spell for me, except, like, I'm going to make you screw it up so that it screws up the entire universe and multiverses. He's doing that on purpose? Yes, that's the premise of the fifth Avengers film where we're at now. That's an alternate Spider-Man or something? No, that's the Spider-Man in this universe. Like, well, okay, you just prefer that to be, okay, yeah. you're just making a joke, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, uh, but, uh. Yeah, so that's why it cascades stuff, and then, like, he goes to get the MIT. So are we just following story-wise? Okay. It's so, like, yeah, then eventually they introduce Dr. Octopus. That's in the trailer for this movie. It's in the poster. It's in the poster. Like, he's, like, 90% of the poster is just Dr. Octopus arms. Yeah, he's actually kind of not in the movie that much. Because there's, like, 20 characters in the movie. In <laughs> and, like, most of the movie he's, like, in a box or whatever. Oh, and, like... Yeah, and then, like... I don't know, I'm doing, like, pretty full spoiler mode now at this point, but... I'm probably warning, don't worry about it. Okay. So, um... I like, most of the stuff that happened, like, happened in Spider-Man 2. Like, yeah. we're just feeding off that movie, basically. Like, he has... Yeah, Spider-Man 2. So, like, a lot of... Yeah, a lot of his Spider-Man 2, yeah. Huh. Um, and then... Yeah. They introduced Dr. Octopus. Then, like, that kicks off the events of, like... So that kicks off the next sequence of events, which is, like, okay... Sp Spider-Man has somehow caused these multiverses to collide, so now he has to go on this mission of gathering all these baddies together in order to, like, put them back to where they belong. So then they start to encounter the other characters, so Dr. Octopus, uh, Green Goblin, Electro, Sandman, Mr. Lizard. <laughs> what Mr. That? Lizard, Mr. Yes, Liz Mr. What the hell was his name? Lizard Man? What the fuck is his name? Dr. Lizard? Liz <laughs> Mr. Lizard... The fuck, the lizard? The lizard, that's all it is. It's that's not too, that's even labor. It's <laughs> a stupid name. So you blame me for saying that? I'm Mr. Freeze. Are you a doctor, Mr. Freeze? The lizard. The lizard's also a doctor. You should be Dr. Lizard. You should be Dr. Lizard. He's a doctor. He's a doctor. Been, all these Spider Man villains are doctors. <laughs> Dr. Yeah, Dr. Octopus. Dr. Lizard. Dr. Octopus. Dr. Dr. Also, also, like, Green Goblin. Electro Spider is totally a doctor, too. Also, 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 Green Goblin's like, hey, that's doctor to you. <laughs> he says that during this movie. It reminds me. Osborne's him. probably uh, Osborne's a doctor. NBA doctor. Yeah. Everyone's a doctor. <laughs> Everyone's got issues. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so then, so then they go on this quest of gathering them all. But then, and then that's all fun and, and stuff. Meanwhile, also, like, uh, I don't know, there's some other stuff happening. But, then, like, Ned learns how to use the ring. And then, Doctor Sh and then finally, the next arc happens when uh, Doctor Strange is like, okay, we gotta put these people back. But then it becomes this moment where, like, Peter Parker in this universe realizes, wait a second, if we put these guys back, what's gonna happen to them? And right. then that kicks off the next arc of this movie. Which is a pretty cool It's actually thing. a pretty cool thing, and it's yeah. actually a natural consequence. Like, it's actually... Okay, what's the natural thing that would happen here? Well, if you send them back, well, what, where would they go back to, right? It's, yeah. It makes sense, and it's like, oh, and then it becomes an actual moral dilemma. And then, like, it actually becomes a big conflict between, like, Doctor Strange and Peter Parker, ideologically, because Doctor Strange believes in preserving the multiverse, and, like, <coughs> even at the cost of, like, you know people's like well like the prime director or whatever it's like the prime director you don't interrupt you don't yeah. intervene but then peter parker's like no i gotta do it and then he wins zendaya Mary mj i was about to say mary jane mj says that's just who he is he needs to help people i do i know. think that's a really good moment yeah i think that's a really good moment for his character yeah 
And it also results in this awesome sequence where Spider-Man's fighting off against uh, Doctor Strange in like uh, the mirror dimension. They bring that back again. Uh, they also fight in some other things I totally forgot about. They also fight in New York City, I think, and stuff. Um, I forgot this is a different MJ, which is one note I talked about, put in the notes before I forget, and uh, what's the other thing? Oh, um, this is the thing about what happens to them at the end of the film, which I think we should mention. I don't know if we should mention it now or later. Can you, like, give, like, a word, a keyword footnote for it so we can be reminded of the keyword? Well, they all die, or supposedly they all die in their original films, but, like, I think Sandman never died. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I don't remember. I think he... I thought he did die in his first. I don't remember, because, like, a lot of people hate that movie, so they never watched never it. Never it's Spider-Man 3, right? Yeah, it's Spider-Man 3. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. I think he did. Yeah. All right. But uh, also, like, during this movie, he says, I want to get back home, but then he sort of forgets about it. He, he, just, right? he just sort of beats up people. He's like... <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, I don't like you guys because I'm supposed to be a villain in this film. Yeah, this I don't reason. think... Does he, like, get... He's supposed, he's supposed to be, like, Does a, he get manipulated by the Green Goblin or something? He's supposed to like, be manipulated by Electro, and then they don't... It feels like they delete the scene because they never follow up on... Yeah, it's it never... Just, it just goes after Peter Parker. Either, yeah, when they have... Like, I figured if he back. saw Peter Parker take off his mask, he would be like, oh, that's Peter Parker from my universe. Like, right. the third Peter Parker or the homecoming Peter Parker wasn't lying to me. He was telling the truth. Yeah... Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, that's all in the big climactic finale, but anyway, uh, so then they spend this whole arc, another arc, so like, another arc trying to help these guys and stuff like that, Yeah. and um, and that's kind of like kicked off by like, uh, Norman Osborn, who's played by Dennis Leary, and uh, it is kind of kicked off by him, quote unquote, but uh, but uh, oh, as they're helping people out, you know, you know, sometimes things have consequences as, uh, I don't even remember which character said that when you help people. Um, so to was be... it Lizard Man? <laughs> the Lizard? <laughs> Dr. Lizard? <laughs> Dr. Lizardo? <laughs> so people listening to this, I'm very curious about your thoughts about uh, what he just said about Green Goblin. He, he kicks it off, right? It's like... Yeah, he kicks it off. Yeah. He kicks it off, right? Yeah. So Spider-Man <laughs> tries to help them. But then meanwhile, while this is happening, Green Goblin's like, yeah, I want to help out too. But, and like, he's like throwing his mask. So you're like kind of guessing a little bit like, okay, is he actually able to like help out? Is he actually turning a new leaf? He like shows up at Aunt May's like soup kitchen or whatever. Like, yeah, I need help, Mr. Parker. And then Aunt May is like, you know, we help people. That's what we do. That's and that, nice. And, and, like, that's, um, and that speaks to Peter's character, Aunt May's character and stuff. I didn't know Aunt May was in a soup kitchen, but like... I whatever. didn't know that either. I don't know where that came from. I watched Homecoming. I don't remember that anywhere. Yeah. That came but it was, it was nice. Fine, you know, like, fine. It doesn't it was matter. Wall, I found this wall written then like in the beginning with like, oh, we gotta, we gotta make all these jokes in the middle of this really dramatic film where like Green Goblin is like having a... Crisis or whatever. There's like this huge like tone shift, but like yeah, it was good because like they were like, oh, he doesn't have a Oscorp, he doesn't have a son, he doesn't have a friend, he's he's all alone here. That was pretty good. Right, right. <coughs> I'm all alone here. I'm all alone here, Mister Parker. I'm all. <laughs> I'm all. You gotta help me, Mister Parker. I'm in the Simpsons universe. <laughs> Can you help me, Mister Parker? Can you help me? <laughs> it's a Christmas story. It's a Christmas movie. But the thing is, like, that thing is the exact thing that is this Spider-Man's weakness. And the Green Goblin side of Norman Osborn knows that. And that's the interesting dynamic, is that if you keep ble being a bleeding heart for everybody, there's going to be people who stab you in the back when that happens, and that's what happens in this. Oh, you mean with people in general, not specifically with Peter Parker? With this, well, with people in general, and also this specific Tom Holland, Peter Parker. That's that kind of stuff is sort of weird because like he even saves like the vulture at the end of Homecoming and stuff like that. But how would he know that if he's never been? The, I guess he could have read the news or something. But like they don't like I I wouldn't assume like one person's Green Goblin oh, would assume does, what the other Spider Man. How does the Green know. Goblin know that about this Peter Parker in this universe? There's a lot of that in this film, which good, I wasn't a, a fan good, of. That's a good point. But yeah, like I don't know, it was a thing, I guess. 
Yeah, how does he know? <laughs> I mean, I guess he met Aunt May. Well, like he saw Aunt. Oh, May. he did, he could have had a cold conversation. He probably, with Aunt May, he probably yeah. had. A, he probably saw the Spider Man outside the soup kitchen, and then like he's like, "Whoa, this this is a guy I could pick on. He's at the soup kitchen." <laughs> yeah. Oh, this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, this, this guy's gonna, you know, give me his, uh, give me his car or something. To... Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, pay it forward. Oh, I'll pay it forward, all right. <laughs> pay it forward real good. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Man, this guy's giving me the, give me the clothes off his back, you know. But, yeah, that's the tricky thing is that dynamic between Peter Parker. And... Sort of had this little, like, he was, he had the robe on and he was, like, sort of like that, uh, that evil stepmother, like, he sort of that has the evil stepmother imagery with him with the right, robot and stuff. Right, it's like in Snow White when you have like the the old lady from the forest who needs yeah. help. Yeah. And like, oh she's so kind, so she lets him in, helps the old person in. Yeah. I just need some help, Sonny. And then like, you know, if you invite them in, then that's how like you know, a bad spirit like inv- like can take over or whatever. That's like in Japanese folklore, Akami or whatever. Yeah. Like if you invite them into your doorstep, yeah. then like they can take over and haunt your house or whatever. So you got to be really careful to, so like, yeah, that's this whole di- dichotomy, like a uh, dynamic between like being generous and uh, being nice to people and also like being careful around people. It's always keeping you guessing and stuff. And that's this kind of eternal dynamic here with, with being someone who's like bleeding hard and helpful to people and stuff. And, like, yeah, uh, Green Goblin is kind of, like, embodying that kind of dynamic here. And he, you can see that in his act, And in his acting does that really well. It's Dennis Leary. Um. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think, I think I've made the joke. I don't know. Do you think he's, like, the most suspicious guy in the world? There's that. And uh, <laughs> are you going to keep calling him Dennis Leary? Wait, is it? It's not Dennis Leary, is it? It's not Dennis Leary. <laughs> Who is it again? It's William Dafoe. William Dafoe. <laughs> they look the same. They look the same. <laughs> it's like William H. Macy and Dylan Baker. Yeah. yeah. I think even... I think... I and Dennis Leary is actually in Amazing Spider-Man 1. Shit. I think, even worse. I, I think even Dennis Leary has made jokes on in his stand-up comedy about how he looks like <laughs> William Dafoe, too. So, shit, William Dafoe. My yeah, I haven't heard about it's Dennis Leary in a while, actually. It's William Dafoe. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's also interesting how, like... They bring, like you said, they bring in uh, Green Goblin before he, like, disappears in their universe. But, like, they don't bring back uh, uh, Harry Osborn or whatever. Right. Um, even and though technically they could probably do that because, like, it's the... They also have another Harry Osborn is another issue. Okay, it's complicated. Okay. Because of Amazing Spider-Man. This is just a very complicated movie <laughs> to make in general. Because, like, they have to come... They have to worry about the conflicts between all three studios to agree to it because they have to go out of their minds in order to agree to it. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty impressive they got Jamie Foxx, one of the, a lot of big names. A lot of big names, yeah. yeah. Jamie Foxx is Electro, Willem Dafoe, and not Dennis Leary. How many times did, 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 did I say Dennis Leary? Did you actually get the actual Dennis Leary even though he's in the first one and does die? How many times did I say Dennis Leary? <laughs> I've said it like a million times. You only said it like once, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, was just, I was just gonna. I probably. I was wondering how, if I should, should just kept it going. Yeah, kept it going. <laughs> Willem Dafoe. He looks the same. He does look very they similar. They have a similar mannerisms too. Yeah. Their facial structure. I don't know. Yeah. Um. But uh, Willem Dafoe. They had um, Tobey Maguire, of course, Andrew Garfield. I felt like Willem Dafoe is aged better than Tobey Maguire has at this point. Willem Dafoe. He's doing all these yeah. stunts and like yeah. he's like pretty fit. Or Tony McGuire looks fit. like he, he didn't do anything. Yeah, t- yeah. Willem Dafoe looks like the same as he did like he still in, looks in like platoon. He's, he's still, or like in the in the Jesus film with uh, Scorsese. I mean, he was really wrinkly before. <laughs> so, 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 so like Palpatine, right? He's retained his wrinkles as he did before. It helps to be wrinkled when you're around your age because it's, it's that's, like. But, like, somehow, like, Tobey Maguire looks <clears throat> like he still has a weird baby face, but with wrinkles at the same time. <clears throat> he looked like he had, like, a lot of makeup. Mm-hmm. And, like, he looked very stiff. Yeah. And... He was kind of stiff in the original movies, too. Yeah. He, I, he, he talked... Well, early on, when he, they introduced him, he sounds a lot like the Tobey Maguire from that film. Which I didn't really appreciate because I watched the 90s cartoon at the time. But, like... If you're a fan of that stuff, and 
I, I got a kick out of it when I was saying, like, the lines, like, a, like the 2000 Spider-Man, I would say, like, in his film, mm. when he was introducing himself. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Mm. And... Wait, what lines? What lines? I forget what the line was, but, like, it felt very wholesome or whatever it was, like, mm. where, like, uh, Garfield's, like, the when, when he comes to, one. You mean when he comes through the portal or whatever? When he comes through the portal is one, it's, what, that whole interaction with Garfield was, yeah. like, that was, like, oh, 2000s Spider-Man. Yeah. I don't know what he said, but it felt very Tobey yeah, Maguire so, Spider-Man. So, like, yeah, I guess, what, okay, before we get to that, yeah. uh, was there anything we needed to go over on the arc of, like, uh, oh, yeah, we need to cover, like, we got to wrap up the arc on, like, um, them trying to reform. So they're trying to reform the guys before they send them back. Yeah. And it ultimately doesn't work out because of the Green Goblin. Right. Because uh, he, he's a sneaky son of a bitch. <laughs> he's a sneaky son of a bitch. He's so sneaky that even Norman Osborn doesn't even know what's happening. Yeah. So that's how sneaky he is. He's a sneaky. That's one of those, like, uh, oh, yeah. when they set that up, there's, like, this interesting uh, spider sense thing, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll be, I don't know if it's in the films is the only issue. Yeah. It's, it doesn't really matter, yeah. Yeah, there's a new spider sense mechanic in this movie. He's, he's sort of like Quicksilver in the X-Men universe where everything slows down. He's like... Yeah, it's like a... Face cam and then like he moves around and stuff. Everything's slow motion. I I like how it's how it's shot where like you know he's like I don't know what's wrong, <laughs> and he's like looking at everybody and like he's like something's wrong. Is it this person? Is it that person? Is it Electro? Is it this person? And he just somehow he just does the math and does the instinct to like just web up Green Goblin. Yeah. And then Green Goblin's like you figured it out and I'm like. That felt like a great moment. That was yeah. a great moment. Like, yeah. That was really masterful. Yeah. I also think, like, that that spider sense mechanic is yeah. also kind of what happened at a moment earlier in the film. Yeah, it did happen earlier in the film, yeah. When uh, uh, he's facing off with Doctor Strange. Doctor so Strange. When he's facing off with Doctor Strange. Oh, Doctor he's Str like, and then he gets the, gets the whole box thing, right? Yeah, when they're facing off with the boxes on the box to like recapture everybody to the multi to their dimensions. Um, Peter Parker is like, uh, Oh yeah. He like, yeah, here's what I remember. Dr. Strange astral puts him into the astral plane. Yeah. So like he knocks him out of his body. Yeah. And then like, so he, so he tries to take the box from him, from his like bot out of body experience and stuff. Yeah. But then, uh, but then, his, like, his body's still responding. And I think that's his spidey sense taking control, even when he's not in his body. So he has, even his body we'll has... see, yeah, they didn't explain it, but I don't think they need to explain it. I don't think they need to explain it. I think that's what it was, though. I think it was, yeah, it could be, or maybe it'll be, like, Avengers Thanos in a new film or something, I don't know. But like, I, I have a feeling that's what it was. They it don't explain be, yeah. it, but yeah. I don't, yeah. Um, let me see. But yeah, that was a cool moment. Anyway, then there's the Green Goblin... He fucks everything up. Electro takes off with the arc reactor. Yeah. Sandman escapes and changes his mind about seeing his daughter for some reason. Yeah, that was really that was really sort of sort of bad. Doctor Lizard was in the truck, decided to be in the <laughs> I, truck. I don't, I don't know he volunteered that. to stay in the truck <laughs> and then decided to bust out at that moment, I guess. I guess maybe he talks with Green I don't Goblin know. about something fair, like, like whatever. I don't know. In Amazing Spider Man one he had so much potential too, because like you Ralph Reed's Fines or whatever his name was such a good oh, actor. Ray Fines, okay. But like, is it Ray Fines that plays? I think so. Yeah. Doctor Lizard. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And That's it's sort of cool. disappointing too, because like he's like a smart human, and then like when he's a lizard, he's like a very worn out villain, unfortunately. Yeah, I learned through this movie that his whole <laughs> idea is to turn everyone in New York City I, I, into I think, lizards. I think they even cartoonified that's, that all of it. That's a, like that like sounds like a really dumb plot. <laughs> 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 it doesn't sound like he's a very intellectual one like he was in the first film, right? I need to evolve into <laughs> to lizards, really? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. I don't even think Dr. Zayas. Dr. Lizard, Dr. Lizard. Dr. Lizard, Dr. Lizard. Dr. Lizard, Dr. Lizard. Dr. Lizard. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, it's not... It's not a very good... And then, like, oh, yeah, there's this... That, that, they, they, they give him no plot. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing they give him. <laughs> Also, there's this fun bonding moment between Sandman. This is a stupid bonding moment between Sandman and Electro. I fell into a vat of electric eels. <laughs> I fell into a super collider. We I gotta stop falling. I guess you don't gotta fall into things. 
You gotta do is, I don't know. My, like, my, gotta, my, my, my mother's gotta, name is Martha too. You gotta fill in the dead air. You gotta just make them relate to each other in weird ways. Like <laughs> my first name is Martha too. That's sort of what it reminded me of. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. It was, it was sort of, it's funnier than the Martha thing. Well, so that, first of all, the Martha thing wasn't even funny to begin with. Also, like, of, not purposefully, at least. So, does the falling into the electric eels ruin him as a person, or does it just make him more evil or something? Like, or does it turn him evil? What I don't think they were really consistent with. That? with, with that uh, makes sense. Like, like, it was like how were they trying to cure him? Like, so his his character was sort of problematic in retrospect uh, when they did that character. Another issue was, like, they added too many characters in that movie, so, like... It was Jamie Foxx. So, yeah, Jamie Foxx, yeah. Okay, yeah. So there was issues with that in the second, second Amazing Spider-Man. Okay. Whatever. They decided to go with Jamie Foxx out of all the characters to pick. Do you think and that was a good choice? it was probably expensive. Um, Do you think that was a good choice to go with Jamie Foxx to bring into this movie? I don't know if you actually have to bring Jamie Foxx, but, like, if you didn't bring Jamie Foxx, like, would people know it's Electro? Um, Do you think it was a good choice to bring an Electro into this movie? There wasn't a lot of move. There wasn't a lot of. Uh, they could have done New Goblin. They could have done. Um, yeah, too many goblins though. It's just covered too much ground. I think there's a venom in the end of that Which film too. Is there? I don't ah, remember. They, they don't wanna, I mean, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um. They only had two movies. Like, and the first movie only has one villain. They gotta spread it. They gotta have a good spread. You know. So. I guess they could have uh, done something with Gwen or something. I guess. So they got to... So they, they have nothing to, they they have to, to work with. They have two films, yeah. Also, Jamie Foxx is, like, a great actor and stuff. So, yeah. So it's a good star power moment. Yeah. So they got to go with Electro. Like, pretty sure... I don't know how much they paid him, but, like, even if they didn't pay him a lot, like, he'd be like, wow, this is great to be on my resume. I'm in this billion-dollar franchise. I'm back in Marvel again. Yeah. yeah, he also ups the stakes quite a bit because, like, with him and the arc reactor, just, like... Lore wise, power level wise, it just ups the stakes in terms of fighting and stuff. So yeah, I was like, makes yeah, I, I, I give him the arc reactor. You got you got to make a synergy of the brands, the arc reactor. Like you could probably sell like a five hundred dollar electro arc reactor online it now. Ma- it makes a huge action sequence. Yeah, uh, yeah. They sort of give him an Iron Man suit, right? It's basically him having his own Iron Man suit. Yeah. yeah. Um, they don't really have a lot of Stark technology in this movie. Otherwise, really. The Stark, yeah. Do you want to talk about the Stark stuff? The Stark synthesizer or there's whatever a lot thing? The Stark lore in general with this film. Yeah, there's no suits or anything. There's, like, Spider-Man... I don't, I don't know how they have Spider-Man, the Iron Spider-Man... Iron Spider-Man's in it for a little bit, but it's nanotech, and then they use it to occupy... And they don't use it in the finale, right? They occupy it with Doc Ock for a while, but they don't... I don't I don't remember them using it in the finale that much. Yeah. And they don't use his, like, like spider... His, like, octo legs that much either. So. Yeah, it's it's weird. They have. I was gonna mention that Happy Hogan's in this, and I guess like he has nothing to do because like there's no yeah. there's no Tony Stark now, so they they gotta give up, get, put him with someone. Yeah, yeah. So I guess um, do. And it, during that, they didn't use Pepper or yeah. or, or Rhodey. Rhodey or they don't really have many other like like heroes in getting it. rid of like Robert Downey Jr. like completely destroyed like it, the whole Stark brand and like the universe. He was, like, a pretty big part of Spider-Man. Hopefully. Even Marvel, even. Like, he was pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, and like, now you have a whole bunch of Stark buildings with, like, no Stark. Yeah. Um, let me see. Okay, so, yeah. And then at the end of the whole sequence where, like, uh, Electro escapes, Green Goblin escapes, uh, Sandman escapes, the Doctor Lizard escapes. So, just because this is a radio, he's counting these... Villains on his fingers, just so you know. There's like so just, many. Just to make sure he doesn't forget one. He's in track. I feel like I missed somebody. Probably. <laughs> was the uh, Shocker there? I don't know. Shocker, Shocker yeah. was in the first Shocker Homecoming, and he, he didn't show up. Oh, I guess because, like, they can't do Amazing Spider... They can't do Homecoming villains, because, like, they're probably gone already because this is originally that universe or something, I guess. Oh, uh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Shocker was in... He's in one homecoming? of the he's in, he's in one of the homecoming films, yeah. Right. He's like a very lame character, but he, there's a shocker. Maybe they have a no okay. shocker. They don't have like, Vulture. They don't so have... he's it's sort of like a Mandarin for like that film. Okay, they don't have Vulture in this. I don't remember what played happened. By, played by Michael Keaton, which is weird. He was like, alive. He... he was perfectly fine. He was just chilling. He was like, "I'll be back, kind of. I could be back at any moment." He was a very interesting Whatever. villain. He was an interesting villain. He didn't do anything after Birdman. He did like the, the Mr. Rogers documentary and then he just had 
I guess he just likes his quiet life, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so at the end of this whole sequence, uh, Green Goblin, like, finally defeats Spider-Man because he appeals to his weakness, to his kind heart, and then as a result, Aunt May tells him that with great power comes great responsibility, and... It's happening again. It's happening it's again. It's happening again. See you again in 25 years. Wait, what do you mean by that? Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks, okay. Yeah. It's ha- okay, I don't know what that is, but okay. Like, it's happening again. Like, it's, it's the last quote in Twin Peaks season two, mm-hmm. and then they have the series come out, the third season come out 25 years later. Okay. And it's the refer- it's easy to reference, because like, they did the same thing with The Matrix. Someone... Somewhat Independence Day, not so much with Star Wars as the only one. What does that have to do with great power and great responsibility? That was my favorite thought. Um, it's happening again. It's happening again, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, but, uh, so yeah, it's happening again, and Aunt May, very tear jerking, very dramatic moment. Very sad moment, really moving moment. Aunt May passes away. It's a really sad moment. And, like, that's the end of Marissa Tomei's career in the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. I was not expecting that going into this movie, honestly. But it makes sense because, like, there's no Uncle Ben equivalent in this sto- universe. They never did Uncle Ben, right? Did they? I'm trying to remember. I don't think. I, don't, I think they might have, like, glossed over it in Homecoming or something. Like, maybe passed away a while ago. Yeah, it's like, something. I think, like, it was like, we, we did Uncle Ben several times already. We don't need to do Uncle Ben a third time. Yeah, right? yeah. They, they mentioned, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was, like, a one-line thing, if anything. It's like, uh, Uncle Ben passed away. You know, yeah, I think yeah. it was, like, a one-line thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, yeah, they do it, and, like, and, like, when she says it, you're like, oh, no, she's not getting out. <laughs> no, don't say it. <laughs> don't say it. You might live. <laughs> Like, when she says, you're like, no, she's, she's not making out. She's gone, scene. man. She's gone. <laughs> and like, oh, but it but this, it this is never a moment like that in the film, yeah. too, which I don't remember. Yeah. So, yeah. And then that's a sad moment. And then there's a lot of sad moments like that in this movie. Because there's a lot of characters in this movie. And they got to, like, start chopping things off uh, because there's too many things going on. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, Aunt May passes away. And then after that, Spider Man is sev- is gone has gone missing, and like J Jonah Jameson, who we I don't think we mentioned at any point. No, nope. but yeah, like J Jonah, J Jonah Jameson is like announcing like where is Spider Man the menace, and he's leaves like, nothing but chaos and calamity. But J Jonah Jameson is played by J K Simmons. <laughs> I don't it makes no sense. That's, and this is a crossover movie. Keep in mind, so it's even more confusing. And like to be clear. They open this movie with J.K. Simmons. Before any yeah. crossover elements happen. Before any of the multiverse stuff gets introduced. So somehow he's already... <laughs> the multiverse has already started to happen. With, <laughs> with I don't understand James how he's... Jameson. Legit- I, don't, I, I, I was like, did I miss something in the second <laughs> Homecoming movie or something? But I, I thought, I, I'm honestly, thinking I'm mixing him up with like the... Or at least the J. Jonah Jameson with like the Perry White character. Like Man of Steel or something. But I could have swore those different... J. Jordan Jameson or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, but yeah, so J. Jonah and then like, uh, so then what's going to happen? It's up to Spider-Man's friends to bring Spider-Man back into action and to like put an end to all this stuff. And then Ned has the ring sling, sling ring from, uh, Dr. Strange after Peter Parker won it in the battle. Uh, in the face-off with Doctor Strange while Doctor Strange is left tumbling in the mirror dimension. And uh, so... He's in the so, Grand Canyon. So <laughs> so he's been tumbling in the Grand Canyon for like... It's, it's, the, it's the lowest <laughs> part. It's, it's the it's biggest the drop in the US, US, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you love me tumbling in the Grand Canyon <laughs> for 12 hours? <laughs> it felt like a, he sort of made a very Simpsons-like manner, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or well, like they fairly, do, they, fairly they, godparents. Uh, they're definitely inspired by the portal, Valve's portal, <laughs> with this movie. Yeah. Some um, Inception, like the first Doctor Strange film, like some Inception also. Yeah, the first Doctor Strange also had like uh, the mirror dimension and stuff. I like the uh, folding, the folding city, city and the uh, mirror dimension, and astral world and stuff. So. And like, 
Yeah. But, um, cool special effects. Yeah, there's like a really awesome fight sequence between Peter Parker and Doctor Strange because Doctor Strange is do, pulling out all the stars to be Peter Parker and Peter Parker wins somehow. It's amazing. So it's very cool. He used math. He used, oh yeah, that was the thing. He used math. It was an Archimedes uh, spiral or whatever. That's yeah. What it was. Yeah, it was very cool. He did all his homework like while fighting or something in this, <laughs> in this universe. Yeah. It didn't matter anyway, which we'll get into in a moment. Yeah, yeah. But um, anyway, so... Uh, let me see. So then, like, his friends try to find Spider-Man. And then they're like, okay, let's find Spider-Man. And they're like, oh, look, it's him. And like, you're not him. Who the, f- who the hell is this guy? I'm like, hey, everybody, it's me. I'm amazing. <laughs> I'm amazing. I'm pretty amazing. I'm, I'm a Spider-Man. I'm, I'm amazing Spider-Man, you know? And then they have a cute little exchange, like, look, I can stick to the ceiling. I'm Spider-Man. I'm Peter Parker. People were really Spider-Man. annoyed at the time with that Spider-Man, because, like, oh, everything has to be MCU or whatever. But, like, I feel like people warmed up to him now. Okay, I think he's, like, pretty fun in this. I don't this is the exact same thing, I feel. Like, okay. I, I just feel like he's, he's actually in MCU, so people don't mind it. He's kind of cutesy in this. I don't know. Yeah. He's, like, whatever. He's good. Uh, yeah, Andrew Garfield does a good job playing that character. Yeah. And then, I don't know, I don't know if there's that much to say about his introduction. Um, yeah, I mean, we're doing it via radio, it's not gonna work as well. There's not really much to say, like, they, like, they're like, are you really him, blah, 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 and then he's just... I'm not trying to think about what, uh... Like, and I think they basically discuss how they need to get to his friend. I felt like the comedy in that scene was better than, like, in that first part of the film, which I felt like... I don't know what was, what was with that writing, but I felt like the comedy really worked here. I, well, uh, Andrew Garfield was, like, an Academy award winning actor, whereas Zendaya and, like, Tom Holland, like, they've been, like, three films each for, like, MCU only or whatever. Mm. I mean, yeah. they're pretty young and stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Garfield's actually pretty young, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they bring in the other Peter Parker, and they're like, you just found a random dude. <laughs> like, Who the <laughs> fuck is this? It's like, And then, like... Like, wait a second, if you're Peter Parker, so they have a big standoff. Yeah. So then they find out, oh, random dude who looks like a saggy baby face guy with like a lot of makeup and saggy wrinkles as actually. I think they call him a saggy baby face guy or something in the film. What? Did they actually call him that? Yeah, I think so. (laughs) Maybe I'm just, did I imagine that or did. Right now I'm mentioning it and I'm like, (laughs) imagine if they had like made a reference to the pizza or something. Like, I don't think. He doesn't eat pizza at all in the movie, which is a certain point. I don't think they call him a saggy baby face guy. They said, you just found a random dude (laughs) because he's dressed in regular (laughs) attire. Because he, they never reveal his identity as Spider Man in his universe. I think is the thing. I don't think they he do. He kept it. his I secret think, identity. I think only in this film, they, in all three franchises, they kept his identity in it. In the film. oh, actually, they didn't. Oh really? You don't know that, but they didn't. Oh. It was a it was a good movie, but like it was very contra- the people people who hated the movie were like. What's wrong with this? Like, everybody knows who he is. It's Spider-Man 3 or whatever? Something like that, yeah. Okay. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man? It wasn't Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, yeah. Spider-Man. It's not Spider-Man 1, 2, or 3? People didn't make a big... Di- it wasn't Spider-Man 1, 2, or 3, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Okay. Yeah. People didn't make a... No one made a big deal out of it, but, like, they couldn't figure it out if they wanted to. Oh, you mean when he's, like, hulking the train thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and, like, hey... We're New Yorkers. We ain't, we ain't gonna. We 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 ain't gonna. Here's your mask, Spider Man. We ain't gonna reveal your identity. We're Spider-Man. protecting you from Doctor Octopus or whatever. We're gonna protect you from the Doctor <laughs> Octopus, Spider Man. There's a bunch of teamsters, yeah. From Brooklyn. Hey, we're from New York. It might be Coney Island. I don't know where it was. Yeah. That was actually a really big moment for New York. Yeah. When like, hey, we're New York. It was after nine eleven when that happened. Yeah. So like, it was the first time after nine eleven. Right? It's a really big moment for New Yorkers yeah. to like see New Yorkers band together for Sp- the Spider Man movie. Yeah. So, also there was like a moment in this movie. They're like, "What's your favorite spot? The Chrysler Building. What's your favorite spot? Empire State." <laughs> so, yeah. Also, like, I have another issue with uh, the whole of- premise of this film. In between my two viewings of the film. Yeah. Like, if you looked at Tom Holland on the street, would you be able to identify him? He looks like a random guy, right? <laughs> like, I feel like, well, how would you be able to identify this guy? Like, like he's all on the TV screen, but I don't know, I don't know who he is. Like, that's not going to help me figure out who Spider-Man is. Yeah. 
If you, unless you're like a kid out of school or something, right? Uh, yeah, like if you really knew him, maybe. But like if you're like a random New Yorker, you're not gonna figure out who Tom Holland is. And yeah. Just by oh wow, he's in Times Square. I don't know who he is. Yeah. As a as a person who works and tries to do this kind of eye face facial ID stuff, like I know most people can not ident- identify people who who are close to them or whatever. Like yeah, even, really even, see even looking at someone's photo ID, you really like, can't even tell it's the same person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but uh, let me see. Spider Man, Tom Holland. So yeah. Anyway, they find they're like we need to find your friend Sp- Peter Parker. Find your Peter Parker. And we need to do it together. We have his back. We're all he has. Ba, ba, ba. We'll do it. And then they go meet him. And they go hang out. And then they have a bonding moment. They have a lot of good bonding moments. We don't have to go into all of it. But basically, they all relate to each other's story. Because they're all basically the same person. Basically. They have the same story happening in all their me, stories. It's about me as much it's, as it's, it's, I, it's good, though. It was good. It was actually good how they delivered it because the chemistry was good. I felt that the was acting be- was good. I felt that was better than how they treat the villains because, like, they're like, oh, it's the lizard. You, you, know, you know his story. You know the Green Goblin story. You know the, the, the story. You know all the stories. You don't even need to cover anything or anything new with them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess the most important thing was for the Spider-Man, the Bond. It was like, I'm Dr. Octopus. What... <laughs> What's your deal? I guess if they had the two Harry Osborns bond, it wouldn't have worked as well. Also, Alfred Molina and, like, uh, uh, I keep trying to say Dennis Leary. Uh, <laughs> not Dennis Leary. Uh, Green Goblin? Willem Dafoe. Yeah. Alfred Molina and Willem Dafoe just, like, go right back to the characters. Like, I'm, like, I'm watching those movies again. Yeah. It's, like, just them again. Yeah. It's not even, like... It's like they they they're like kind of rusty at all. It's like they're just Doc Ock and Green Goblin again. Like it's like riding a bicycle. I felt like same with uh, I don't know if it goes Rise Rise he finds uh fault, but like I felt he tried to do his best with that. Uh, Andrew Garfield did his character very well. Okay, that's good. Electro, um, I think there might have been some sort of argument or something. Oh okay, I feel like there's not much to work with with him. There wasn't much. It was it was a sort of a flawed thing in that film to begin with, and um, like you would have had to done a lot of make. Well, I think that was like in the beginning of the film. Then maybe later in the film was different, but like you you would have done ma- ma- major makeup and hair differences if you had done that. I think. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And they probably didn't want to do that for this. He probably didn't want to do it, and like it was sort of like not that. I I think everyone hated it. Also, it just didn't look good. Okay. <laughs> it didn't look good. <laughs> it's just let's just not. Can I would hate that part of the film. Maybe yeah. it's kind. Of, maybe it's like the thing with like Billy and like Power Rangers the movie, where it's like I don't want to wear the glasses for this. And like, fine, don't wear the glasses. Yeah. And, and then, then you just doing the TV and show. Then, and then the TV show is like, can I just not wear the glasses anymore? And they're like, yeah, fine. <laughs> it might have been like that. Where it's like, yeah, we don't need to do this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Right. So yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah. Maybe maybe it's from some different multiverse. Not the one that's exactly like the one from Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so anyway... Uh, and maybe same with the lizard. Right. So anyway, they all band together to try and figure out how to cure everybody again. And ultimately, they decide that, like, they have to cure everybody again. Because that's what Spidey does. And that's what they want this new Spider-Man to do. Because that's the right thing to do. And as your and your heart melts because like this is a heroic moment. You know? And I felt that was always the flaw with the old Spider Man films. Like they were just killing off villains, and they were like likable characters. And like yeah, like I mean, how do you do like Spider Man? He's a cold blooded killer. He's like he's like mm-hmm. Michael Keaton Batman or something. He's just killing off all the villains. He's and literally... this like and you can't make any sequels because all the villains are dead. I guess it's literally addressing the problem with those Spider Man movies yeah. by, with this one by actually saying. We're not going to do that again. We're actually going to have this Spider-Man do the opposite, where he tries to save them from dying and stuff. So it's actually really revising it. They're doing the MCU treatment of revising past characters with past franchises now. You know, like how they used to revise, like, WandaVision characters or whatever, like, or the Mandarin or whatever. Now they're revising other franchises, universes, with this MCU universe now, too. I feel like Iron Man sort of had that issue, too. However, um, I guess Mickey Rourke wasn't good to work with. Um, Sam Rockwell is fine if they ever bring him back. I'm surprised they did that with Jeff Bridges, because like, he seems like the easiest person to work with, so I don't know why they killed him off. 
Uh, okay, I mean, it's the first MCU movie, I guess. Also, MCU movies are about not killing people nowadays. I hope so. Yeah, I remember, like, when I first watched Captain America, he was like, Oh, I'm such a good guy. I'm not going to kill anybody. He's, like, fun. He's, like, funny. funny. He's shooting everybody. He's throwing grenades at people. He's throwing people off rooftops. Like, you're murdering a lot of people, man. I don't know what you're talking about. I guess he was a soldier in wartime, I guess. And that's something even Tony Stark says. He says, I'm not a soldier. Whereas, like, Peter Parker's not a soldier. I feel like that was a very likable thing about Tony. Yeah. Peter Parker's not a soldier. I mean, Captain America's a soldier. Uh, he's I mean, gonna. He's a super soldier. He's gonna. He's I, a plane that might get like murder people. Like I mean, that's the big deal with this movie, right? He can yeah. murder Quentin back and like, oh, like you can't have like a seventeen year old right. like murder someone in the full. Right. The whole premise that kicks <laughs> off this movie is that he it seems like he murders Quentin Beck or whatever. And then later on, Ed Vogt should murder someone. <laughs> it's about his one rule. I have one rule. I have one rule. No guns. I, I saw a meme that was like, uh, like Spider Man says, "I have one rule," and then Batman says, "But you can break every bone in his body, right?" <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> that was a good meme. Yeah. Um, there's something else I totally forgot I wanted to say. Um, something where we were talking about, I I totally lost it. It was something about a, a couple beats back around like, um, I don't know, Spider Man saving people. Um, people not dying is a good thing. People not dying. Green Goblin. Oh, yeah. Also, technically, Green Goblin doesn't get killed by Spider-Man. He is Green Goblin tries to kill Spider-Man, and then Spider-Man leaps out of the way. And then Harry thinks Peter Parker killed him. Do you remember that? In the original Spider-Man 1? In the original Spider-Man yeah. 1 with Tobey Maguire. That was a Disney death. Disney death, yeah. 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 I'm also wondering if, like, the kill count for the Green Goblin in this film is very low. He was, like, pretty brutal. He was, like... He threw a lot of balls. I don't know if anyone was there. You can't see anything. You can't see anything. It was like a Power Rangers, like, TV up somewhere. Like, there's exploding bullets, but you don't see anyone Also, did we mention, like, Daredevil in this... I don't think we did, yeah. In this podcast. We were talking about nonstop right before this. Yeah, yeah. Daredevil makes, like, the most random cameo at the beginning of this movie bringing in the defenders into the mcu in another way they also did in some other franchise that i don't know if you've seen yet uh don't mention it okay but um yeah the defenders are starting to enter the mcu now and um yeah like like spider-man needs a lawyer and he's just talking to daredevil for some reason matt murdoch and it's just there it's just there it's like this is unnecessary but it's happening they don't do that much with it. They just wanted to. They just want to put it He's not in the finale or anything. He's not, he has nothing to do with the, anything else. Any of the movie. Yeah, they just. It's wanted, like, it's like the original. It's like before the credits cameo. Yeah, now they're just doing like fun stuff. They're yeah. just goofing around yeah. like, a little bit. That's like the that's like the that's crossover like, before the actual crossover. It can kind of like be like. It's almost now they're like just <laughs> there's just so much continuity that they're just like throwing in continuity non stuff. With, like, everything now. Yeah, also before this, I was wondering with uh, Disney Plus going so far, lagging so far behind in the streaming awards, if uh, if uh, Marvel will keep, like, that fran- those TV franchises back on Netflix or not. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how yeah. that's supposed to work. But also, they, like, they international are, distribution is different, too. They are bringing the Defenders into the MCU, is okay. what I can say. Yeah. Um, uh, so, um... But yeah, so then they have their big finale at the Statue of Liberty. Which is so like, probably 99% green screen. Sure, yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that a knockout? I'm just saying that. It's, it's, an, it's an amazing fight scene. Yeah. It's just, an amazing action scene. I'm just saying how they probably made it, yeah. And like, they, the Spider-Men do some bonding with a lot they'll, of fun They don't have to do the leap, the Spider-Man leap off the crane. Yeah, there's a lot of really amazing moments. Um... I thought it was a little, a a little messy because, like, I couldn't tell which Spider-Man was which most of the time. <laughs> it didn't help, like, he didn't have the arms on, which would have been a big help. Right. Also, yeah. But uh, it's a pretty fun... That's actually a really great sequence overall. Like, it's amazing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can criticize the sequence too much, really. It's pretty good. Uh, not, not majorly. Um, I wonder if there's an issue with the rights for the original Spider-Man costume... 
Because, like, wasn't the original one, like, the one with the really shiny eyes or whatever? Oh. Uh, I can it, kind of, I think I can kind of tell the difference a little bit between the eyes. Because right? I, know, I, know, I know the original uh, first two films, at least, like, he, he was, like, in a really shiny suit and not, not so much anymore. Uh, and, um... Like the... Oh, yeah, keep going. I'll, I'll no, go ahead, yeah. The Tom Holland suit is very obvious because it's the steel. Yeah, it has, like, all these yeah. different colors. It's so. the Iron Man. It's still, it's, the, it's still the Iron still Man still one is, like, all dark and, like, there's all these explosions going on and all this red, like, you, you it's, rather it's, have the arms just to make it more obvious. It's still the Iron Spider suit yeah. from the end of Homecoming and during Endgame. I mean, yeah. Infinity War and Endgame. So you can tell that it's obvious. He's, like, got so much more... Like, when they, like they kind of have a whole moment where it's like, you've done, like, crazy shit, even though you're younger than us. Like, yeah. you're literally, like... You're like, like, five. Or, or, you're like, five years old. You actually have the best you, gear. You need a childhood. <laughs> you, need, you, you still haven't gotten into college you, you yet? You, 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 you haven't gotten got into college. MIT yet. You haven't gotten into your major rejection yet. You I did get into MIT. I did get into MIT. I saved, yeah. ha- I saved half the universe. Wait, so you're telling I saved me half the universe, but I, I did get into MIT. This is my, my life is ruined. I'm just, I'm just picturing like Andrew Garfield being like... I worked so Tony Stark, but no, no. MIT's, MIT's had, the only thing that's important. You had an internship with Iron Man. <laughs> you were part of the Avengers. Happy Hogan just stops by, and, stops by and says hello to your mom all the time. And then, but also, you, you tried to change the universe. You, you died you, and you came back to life. And then, you your life is literally gone for like a movie. And then you and then you try to erase the fabric of space time simply because you didn't get into MIT, even though you've been through all this amazing oh, stuff. Oh no, it's like the, the third best. With, this is the one thing you can't deal with. <laughs> like we've done, we've had our own problems. We every every Spider Man has problems. You look at a Spider Man problems, 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 man. I you also get, get, I'll get I'll over yourself. <laughs> I still mentioned this before, but doesn't can't Stark like industries give him like a good word to get into MIT or something? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking too. Like, <laughs> like, also, like there's a really are you looking at Avenger? Also, like, a really how, stupid, how bad is your college essay that you can't get into also, MIT? Also, there's a really stupid moment where like it's very I guess really obvious where like Doctor Strange is like, wait, you told me you you made me do that whole damn spell without even calling them. <laughs> You didn't, even try, you didn't apply again? You couldn't wait another six months? You didn't apply again? You didn't even just, pl- like, make an additional ask? Like, a second ask to see if you could... Be maybe maybe they sent the wrong, me- le- wrong letter. Yeah, or maybe you could just, like, show up and, like, ask them. Maybe maybe commu- maybe the CUNY system isn't so bad. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe the CUNY system is good enough. A lot of people went to CUNY. <laughs> maybe you could go to NYU. Oh, he's not bad. And uh, uh, I think in uh, I think uh, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man goes to Empire State University, which is like NYU. Right? I think it was Columbia. Columbia. I I think I had a friend who uh, went to Columbia and like um, they're filming there. Yeah. Oh okay, but uh, at least in like the second floor. Okay, first floor isn't so much. Yeah. I don't mean like the physical real world thing. I mean like the fictional. Oh right, right, yeah. Empire, Empire State. State Empire, Empire yeah. State University. Yeah. But, um, I guess that's like one of the few things in Marvel where like it's not a real place. Like it's if our state almost like whatever. So they own right. the trademark to that or whatever. Right. Imagine if they like made a real college and it was like Empire State University. And it's like all Marvel trademarks and stuff. Yeah. Let me see. Um Shawarma? <laughs> There's no reference to Shawarma. Yeah, I feel like they they, lo- they must have lost the rights to shawarma or something. There's like no meals. There's no pizza for Tobey Maguire. Andrew Garfield, I guess, just doesn't eat. I guess I am kind of wondering where are all the other super. There, there was time for like Ned's mom, Ned's Lola, or whatever, but like never got to see the shawarma guy. Ned's Lola is a, a star of the show. In the movie. <laughs> yeah, she's like just clean things up. I'm tired. <laughs> Doesn't but, care about the heroes. The real, the real hero is a person that just says they're tired. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Um, Spoilers, she does. I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm wondering where all the other superheroes are while the whole universe is collapsing throughout all this. But I guess the movie was packed as it was. I think there wasn't enough time to get there. I'll be at like I guess it's so, New York. It's New York. <laughs> everybody should be everybody there. Everyone should be there, right? <laughs> there's, only, there's only one city in, uh, oh, <laughs> in Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, like I don't know. Hawkeye should be there, right? It takes place at Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. I guess like Hawkeye's not gonna help much. Hawkeye's not gonna help much. <laughs> okay, I could take the ferry. 
<laughs> I mean, Doctor Strange, I guess, could have walked them in. <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> you just get in the way. You get in the way. I know? tried to cast a spell that doesn't collapse the universe. Clancy, Clancy, you, Clancy, Clancy, the you just get out of the way. Oh, yeah, they like the uh, Zendaya likes the New York Mets, right? Oh, she does? Someone does in this movie. I forget who it is. I forget. Oh, yeah, she's good at sports, right? So she's like a fan of the Mets. They're, t- they're talking on their iPhones. What, not the new... Yeah, the face time? I oh, think it's the Mets, yeah. Oh, wow. It's weird. I think they... I don't know why I the Marvel Cinematic Universe likes the Mets so much. Is it because, like... I guess they're from Queens. Also, like, in fin- like in Endgame, like... Oh, Queens. Yeah, that makes sense. Because in Endgame, like... Something happens to the Mets in Endgame. And then, like... Oh! <laughs> it's in the beginning of... Yeah, it's in the beginning of Endgame. They go over Mets Stadium, City Field. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> I guess they're Queens people. They're not. Yeah, they're Queens. They don't want to go to the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean they show Sunny Side in Queens in this movie. Show Franklin K. Lane. They show what else? Um, um, can't remember. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> but yeah, they have a big sequence at the end. It's great. They save the day. Oh yeah, uh, I don't think you mentioned the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. They're running out of uh, famous... Uh, famous spots. Yeah, I think that... That's what I, I'm thinking. I guess, I guess they got to do one they with Ghostbusters at uh, New York Public Library, they got Central you. Park, uh, uh, Natural History Museum. So they got to do a new one. They, they already did the Chrysler Building in uh, Avengers. They already did Grand Central. They did Chrysler Building in Spider-Man 1, I think. They did, they did Grand Central in Avengers. So they got to do something. Yeah, Penn Station. And then, yeah... Should we also mention their modification to the Statue of Liberty in this? There's a lot of modification to the Statue Well, first of all, it's like all like, it's all like sta- scaffolded completely. Yeah, but And also, they don't explain why it is. But also the thing that it's, uh... I don't remember. Holding? You don't remember? No, I don't remember. It's holding a shield. You didn't mention it. Oh, okay. It's holding a Captain America shield. I thought it looked a little funny. It looked, it looked like that, right? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's an honor. Never mentioned it while we were watching it's it. It's an honor to Steve Rogers. Okay. I it's think Captain that, Liberty, I guess. I, I vaguely remember them, like, saying it at some point during the middle of the movie in a very throwaway thing. I mean, it wouldn't work. Well, like, it, I wouldn't, don't, it wouldn't work because, like, the other two Spider-Mans don't have a Captain America. Yeah. Also, I think... I guess, oh, yeah, like, I guess the first two Captain... There's no uh, Avengers in, yeah. mo- in the universes. Yeah, I guess the other two Spider-Mans are, like, Sp- Spider-Man Primes, like, Superman Primes, where, like, he's the only superhero in the universe. There's no, uh... There's no, uh... X-Men. There's no... Avengers, there's yeah. no anything, yeah. I, I didn't mention, like, the comic book stuff. Like, they, they covered this, like, 20 years ago where, like, Spy- this is a whole event because, like, they didn't like the continuity at the time, even though it was so successful. That, like, oh, you gotta forget, everyone forgets who Spider-Man is, like, uh, with Aunt May and Mary Jane and everybody. Yeah, so that's, like, the big ending of this movie is, like, that he has to start over and stuff. But, yeah. So yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know... It's weird because, like, I don't know if the villains go back alive or not. Yeah, how does that work? I don't know. I don't like, know. Like, are, they gonna, are they going to make more movies? And are those movies going to be in the cinematic, Marvel Cinematic Universe? Like, what's happening there? I mean, you have to make it, right? Because, like, people want to watch it, right? I'll be t- Tom McGuire is like, oh, boy. Yo, I, I mean, he's all like, yeah, I can't make any more Spider Man films. At this point, I'm just Stan Lee. <laughs> I'm just Stan Lee at this point. Yeah. Can we let 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 uh let Tom, Tom Holland go. let Tom Holland? Have it. <laughs> I'm tired. Um. Oh yeah, they also reference uh, the musical right in the in the sequence when they're going through Times Square. Oh, I don't I know see if you it. see, you I see, see it. it. Yeah. Blink and you miss it. You'll yeah. see t- Steve Rogers the musical in Times Square, which is also featured in a uh, in Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah, that's not a big spoiler, but it's a fun little it's, Easter egg. That's a, I'll mention it in major spoilers, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they go over the ice rink, which happens in Hawkeye also. Yeah. But there's no Hawkeye in it. I mean, it's a location in New York, like, whatever. I mean, I don't know when's the next time we're going to film all these places. I mean, we might have to, because, like, there's still pandemic, but, like... Um, they haven't closed a lot of stuff like they used to. I, I, in the I, was, I was just literally there at at Rockefeller Center a couple of days ago. Right. Just this past Sunday. Or yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember Uncle Ben for Amazing Spider-Man. Um, but I don't know, that's pretty much the whole movie, right? Yeah, we covered everything. Um, probably could go in more detail, but I think we covered a lot. It, there's a lot of going on in this movie. Yeah. There's like five, there's like all these universes covering like... Oh, we did cover uh, the credits. Oh, yeah, the credit sequence, yeah. Um, yeah, also the animation sequence during the credits, very good. Yeah. Tides you over to the first post credit sequence. Oh, I forgot about that. That was a really fun sequence. It's, like, all involving, like, graph paper and math. And so like far... Really cool. I don't remember Amazing Spider-Man, but so far all the Spider-Man Homecoming films have been the same director, I think. Like, Sam Raimi was okay. from the first three films. Okay. There'll probably be a fourth one. I'll be, I guess, into the... Into the Spider-Verse is also sort of like a fourth film. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, um, first post credit sequence, it's, uh... It's sort of... I don't know if it's something or if it's, like, just a cameo because, like, they had rights from Sony or whatever. So he appears and then he disappears. But they set up something. Right. Um, first off about that, like, they didn't go after him. He doesn't show up as a actual villain to fight in the film which is a little weird that's fine but i guess it's fine because like he's in their universe and he's not an alternate universe no, the, what <laughs> i'm thinking is that him as a character completely out of the picture the thing they do set up is at the end there's a little bit of the symbiote left that can go around in the mcu so that's still around, and that can still be in the MCU. But that bartender is going to be uh, the new the, Venom. That bartender is going to be the new Venom. <laughs> yes. Anything could happen. It could just, I mean, it could, it could go anywhere. It's a symbiote. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't it come out with everything? I just what, did it in the cartoon. What is that Venom universe? Is that it, the Amazing Spider Man universe? or No, it's. Uh, I think Amazing Spider Man had one, or Toby Maguire had Sony? one. It's the Sony verse. What's the Sony-verse? Like, Morbius. Morbius, and Venom, Carnage. That's it, right? And I think Tom Holland. I think Tom Holland counts. Tom Holland is in the Sony-verse? Yeah, it's a little tricky about that, because, like, they own Spy some Spider-Man stuff, but, like... It's weird, because, like, they had all the Sony... Sony property... Spider-Man villains in this one. Which, which really made me confused about who owned it. Is the Venom Sony verse in Tobey Maguire's? Spider no, that the Sony verse one is the the one with the two films with the guy who played Venom in this film, Tom Hardy. Okay, so there's literally not any Spider Man in this like Sony verse. Okay, so I'm there's, there's not, it's not tied to any of these other Spider Man we've been talking about. It's not tied to Tobey Maguire. It's not tied to Andrew Garfield. It's not I think it's like I think. It's, it's, a, it's only... It's, only, it's weird because they use the, the Sony villains. So I'm really confused by that. But, like, like this is how the timeline goes. It's like Tom Holland, Spider-Man, and then just Marvel, and then Sony versus at the same time. Even though, like, in the... Oh top, even though in the Marvel one, they have the Sony villains in it. Which is the two different uh, universes. Yeah, I just stopped. I tuned out. <laughs> All I know is that the <laughs> Venom is in the Sony verse, which does not have Spider Man in it. Or whatever. And like, who knows what's gonna happen with? Even though they're the all Spider Man, even though they're all Spider Man villains or whatever, even though they they don't have a. They can do a little like Venom, Far From Home or whatever this movie's called. That also, oh, Venom Homecoming. So that's just in here too, in addition to all this other stuff. How long yeah. have we been going for? One hour. One hour. Yeah. It feels like longer than that. Okay. Yeah, I was I was worried about like going through some things because I thought like that would be emotionally draining, which is why no one covered. Yeah, we don't have to go into super detail with everything. Everything's good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was the first one, and then the second one is just straight up a trailer. I, yeah, I've never seen that before. Like, like it, it, it felt like one of those little... YouTube advertisements <laughs> that was like an hour long <laughs> that you can skip. But, like, it's like is that a real not, ad? <laughs> that's not a. That's not a. Teaser, or cameo, or a stinger. That's just a trailer for a movie. <laughs> yeah. At that point, and yeah. it's. It, and I don't expect that at the end. Uh, now it's gonna keep me guessing every time I watch. And I was already drained by the parts I didn't like of the of this film. That like I was like, wow, like, I gotta watch the whole trailer now. Jesus. And like the credits were really long too. I felt like it took a while to get through the credits. Yeah. 
But it was it's pretty interesting. Um, what do you want to talk about with that trailer? Um, I'll let you go first. There's Wanda. There's like evil yeah. Doctor Strange. Wanda, evil Doctor Strange. Doctor Evil. Um, there's there's multiverses. Yeah, there's I, I guess that's all we know about. That's like the main thing. Doctor Strange is the worst. Is the is the villain? I don't know if he's like <clears throat> gonna be in like the Avengers. Um, he's going to be the Avengers villain, or what's going on with that? I don't know how much you want me to give spoilers to other things. Nope. There's... They mentioned Wanda, like, knowing about this stuff. Um, She's like a certain level. They like have a name for, like, an Omega level threat or whatever in Marvel. Right, right, and like... So Wanda's and like, like, all these, like All these, like, Thanos gems are, like, made of whatever... Yeah, you any threat to the universe is like a certain level of threat or whatever. Yeah. Um, and like in WandaVision, she's like doing all kinds of crazy stuff there. Yeah. Um, there are versions of Doctor Strange doing all kinds of crazy stuff and other things too. I will say, it's pretty cool. I mean, you gotta you gotta yeah. use that budget, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I wonder. Doctor Strange is a character that can go in a lot of different directions, and they already have gone, taken him in a lot of weird directions already. Is it really Ned, but, like, he transformed into, like, <laughs> evil, evil Doctor Strange? Like, he, he used the ring and the... Is that, is or he's all, it's, it's all that magic. Oh, yeah, is Ned supposed to be, like, the next Doctor Strange? Because like <laughs> the he, next Sorcerer he Supreme. The, he had the sling ring, and then I think he was wearing the cape at some point. Yeah. So are they implying Ned is going to be the Sorcerer Supreme? Also, in I, this... I feel like a lot of people would hate that, but, like... <laughs> I don't know, if, like, people... I think Marvel fans will love it. I feel like it's, people it's would be, like, like, fun stuff, yeah. Also, technically, uh, uh, Stephen Strange is not the Sorcerer Supreme. He isn't. Yeah, he, and in this film, he said he lost that right or whatever. Yeah, the like it's a whatever. Yeah. It's like a thing. It's yeah, a whole thing. They, they, but it does, it does like affect, affect, doesn't, doesn't affect anything. Giving. It doesn't affect anything. They're like, whatever, it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's oh, a, Wong was also, in Wong, also, Wong appears for a minute... Yeah. Just to give some sass, and then he disappears. He, had a, he was right! Wong was right the whole time! Wong was, Doctor Strange and Spider-Man were a bunch of idiots! They movies, should have listened to Wong! All these movies would be solved if Wong was listened to. <laughs> Every single Doctor Strange movie... Oh, uh, Baron Mordo is in uh, the new Doctor Strange movie. At least in the trailer. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, <laughs> shit. He was, oh, he, wait, wait, yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, actually he was. They showed him, yeah. Yeah, forgot. It's <laughs> so forgettable. I don't know what I mean, like, they, was they the didn't trailer. do anything with him. Like I didn't this whole see time. Um, Tuttle Swinton. I think it was her. Yeah. I'll say. Yeah, I mean, I'll say Dennis Leary did. Uh, I mean, I don't think that's possible to see Tilda Swinton. Oh, okay. I I, I think you be, forgot. I might forgot something, but don't <laughs> don't mention it to me. <laughs> There's a lot of multiverses and stuff. Like it's hard to keep track. Also, it's also, also it's a multiverse movie. So like, maybe she can't. Also, show it up. is possible for her to show up potentially too. It's also possible. This is much <laughs> like goblin. Like, and also, literally, this is anything much magic. Also, literally anything can happen. Also, she has appeared in like you know other movies in game, and yeah. stuff. So yeah, so I guess she could do whatever she wants. Yeah. You know. So yeah. But yeah, like Doctor Strange is a very interesting kind of like character and you like a whole. This is this is a three like, D film, which is oh, it's a three D movie. Yeah, like they yeah. offered it in three D, which would have been great to watch in three D. I think it's gonna be complicated enough as it is in two D. <laughs> I don't know if I need three D for it, yeah. but uh, that's good that they have that off. Wow, they're they're doing three D again in, for movies now. Yeah. Interesting. I feel like they haven't done three D. Are they doing? I, I feel like they started doing IMAX again recently too. Yeah. They didn't use uh, the Mary Jane from the original Tobey Maguire universe. Whatever. <laughs> they didn't use the new Goblin. They didn't use the original no. Lizard. They didn't use yeah, whatever. Uh, I think they gotta have to. I think as like a production issue, and also just they already had too many characters already. I know story <laughs> thing, like you just need to have enough characters, a good spread, you know. A good spread, but not to enough enough to have a good spread, but not enough to overwhelm people. And even then, I still feel like a lot of people were overwhelmed. 
Yeah, I think they definitely didn't need a lizard. <laughs> and I felt like yeah. Sandman, like, they gave up Sandman, writing someone. I don't, they just kind of, He's like, a good character, but, like... I felt like they skipped some scene with him yeah. or something. Like, I don't know what happened. She was like, I just want to see my daughter again. I'm going to destroy you. I like, hate Spider-Man. I hate Spider-Man. Like, Spider-Man. Sp- that's, that's what every Spider-Man villain says. <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> yep. That's, that's this Spider-Man. <laughs> That's what, there's like, this movie has like six villains saying like Spider-Man. <laughs> You're gonna say Spider-Man in a uniform. Curse you, a... Spider-Man. <laughs> curse you, Spider-Man. Curse you, Spider-Man. Curse you, Spider-Man. And curse you, Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you. <laughs> Pointing around. <laughs> Alright, that's pretty good, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So overall, I think it was a very fun movie. There's a lot. There's a lot of fun. Yeah. There's a lot of fun. It's pretty hard to follow. <laughs> but maybe I, some parts might have not I, been I followed, perfected I followed, because of whatever. I'm glad I could follow as much as I could. I don't. That was fun. Yeah. I'm glad. Like. And the 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 best moments of the film are we gonna remember. Yeah. I I enjoyed it. Like I'm keep I, you watching it. I, for, given all the things I did not watch, I still enjoyed it a lot. I mean, uh, before the pandemic, your last film was Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I I'm also feel like, you know, I don't feel obligated to go back and watch the ones I missed now, too. So that's fortunate. <laughs> it saves me some time. Um, because I feel like I could get the gist of what I needed to with this movie. Yeah. Um, so, and I don't feel like... Oh, it's you mean that for Spider-Man films? Yeah, the, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man and, like, uh... Right. And, like, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home too. I also don't feel like I'm being spoiled in a big way that's gonna ruin my experience of those movies either. Yeah. So, like, it felt okay to just watch this without the context of those movies. Um, it's also... I also think it's... I also watched the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, and I thought it was a lot of fun watching those characters again yeah. in this movie. So it was worth seeing those characters. There was a Morbius trailer before this film was Oh, played. yeah. And they also said from the creators of Spider-Man Far From Home, I'm like, I haven't even watched this movie yet. So <laughs> you're already hyping this. <laughs> they should put that in the trailer. At, at the end credits, right? <laughs> Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, Morbius is in the same universe as the Sony-verse as Venom, right? Yeah, yeah. Along with, like... Even though, like, Blade isn't somehow? Oh, Blade isn't? I think Blade is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe for some reason. Also, apparently, there's a Ghost Rider in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I've heard about that. And he's in the Hell Dimension. Is that just Hell? Is the Hell Dimension now? In the Marvel Cinematic Universe wiki... There's like a wiki for different dimensions, like the quantum realm, the astral dimension, the mirror dimension, and then they also had one for the hell dimension where, where uh, Ghost Rider is from. I it's I don't really understand. I was reading it. I was like, this just sounds. I don't know what the deal with this is. I don't really get it. It's not important. <laughs> sounds cheesy. You're wondering if they're gonna have a Madam Web or something. Oh, uh, okay. That'd yeah. be interesting. Yeah. I really I really would like them to have more of the stuff from like the Spider Man animated series. Not literally like, you know, from that universe, like but those like characters. those elements yeah. like reused in this. Because yeah. there's a lot of really cool stuff in there that like I would love to see again. Yeah, I don't really cross over with much, unfortunately. Yeah. But it was a good Spider Man. This is a fun movie. It's, it's a fun very movie. good good action, good story, good emotion. I remember better than I remember the second film. Good drama. It does have good moments. Yeah. yeah. Um, just like the thing. I haven't, is, I, haven't made a, I haven't made a solid decision on what I think of the film yet, but like, yeah. there's definitely some good parts of the film, yeah. I will say, though, if you are the type of person that, like, when they watched Civil War and was like, I don't understand what the fuck's going on, then, like, I feel like this is going to be one of those kinds of movies where it's going to be hard to follow a little bit, and I can't speak to that. I feel like. I, fo- I, I watched, hope- I watched like, almost everything, and I still couldn't follow everything. Just yeah. Cause, just because it's, like... It's, it's hard to remember everything. Yeah. So... And, like, they don't really, like... They don't, like, flashback or yeah, whatever. Yeah, if, if you don't watch the other films, I, I don't know if you, if you would really care about Tobey Maguire's character. Well, I feel like the other Spider-Men are done well. The villains, I'm not sure if you would necessarily care about. Because, right, like, they don't the other spider Man's like, the new Uncle Ben's now, basically, which is pretty cool. Right, they're, like, the father figures. Yeah. 
especially Tobey Maguire. All right, because he's twenty years old. He's a grandpa. <laughs> he's grandpa Spider Man. Hey, Spider Man, dude, it's with great power comes great responsibility. Oh, my back. <laughs> No, no, that's that's what my uncle Ben used to say. Oh, okay, old man. It's, <laughs> Aunt, Aunt Mason. No, we know. We get it. <laughs> With great power comes great... Re- say the line, Peter. With great power comes great responsibility. Yay, said the line. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot to mention that. Like, I feel like <laughs> the Spider-Man, like, tropes, they've been done so often. It's sort of like the Titanic the Titanic review on, on Red Letter Media, where, like, everyone knows what they are. Like, it, there's only so much we can do with them at this point since it's been, like, 20 years of media of it. The like, only thing you can like, do is to start re- back-referencing them. <laughs> you, have to, you have to do post-postmodernism now with yeah. them or something. Yeah, Cause like, Because, yeah. like, we, we all know what the Green Goblin did at this point. The Dr. Apple story is, is original. The Lizard, sure, not really, but, like, at least it was a different actor. I don't well, like know. in the Green Goblin, we've done so many times already. Yeah, it is. I, I I guess I will say as much as I enjoyed this movie, like I will say now with more and more Marvel movies, even with like the post credit sequence stuff, everything is just becoming solely for fans who are like following every little thing now, or at least follow enough of it. It's I, becoming a, a cumbersome thing where like they have to deal with more continuity. Than like and be able to like have more free reign to deal with new continuity, and I think that's part of the reason why they're going into the multiverse direction <laughs> is so they can have some clean slates to just kind of wipe some stuff over again. Okay, so they might delete a universe, so they'll like delete a universe, universe or ignore one. They'll they'll like you know have a big climactic multiverse event that like destroys universes or whatever. Maybe they just ignore it or kills characters, or they just have a new character to rewrite the character, or just like have something to get rid of old actors so they can like. Stop paying them so much and stuff because that's something you have to deal with in Hollywood compared to the comic books or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, these things are becoming like I can't. It's, I can't even. I can barely keep up with what's happening anymore. So that's probably one of the reasons why they're going in this multiverse direction. Is to just be able to like have a clean, start to like pare down a bit. After you gotta go open things up in order to start paring down. How many characters would you say was in the film? I don't fucking know, man. It was like probably like. Several dozen or something. Several dozen. And then, we're, like, and then we're, we're in the postcard sequence. It's like a number six. This is like, this is, I mean, yeah. It's like... It's ridiculous, right? Like, I, I forgot Daredevil was in this. I was like... I oh, forgot Daredevil, yeah. Yeah, right? Like, I guess he wasn't like a main character. But he's still a character, yeah. And like... Uh, I guess it's normally... If you don't know who Scarlet Witch... I guess you sort of know who Scarlet Witch is based on that trailer. Right. Yeah. Yeah, every, every single thing is dealing with like a dozen characters and yeah. stuff. And, like, me, I've already had to be, like, oh, yeah, this already is a thing here. This is another thing there. I have to avoid spoilers for that because there's a million different things that they all tie into each other and they all spoil each other. It's impossible to keep up with anything. It's a full-time job keeping up with all this stuff. Journalists, uh, writers, yeah. I feel like journalists have a good job, a good gig going to do the Marvel Cinematic Universe beat because there's constantly more stuff for them to cover. Yeah. But like, you know, for like an average I'm, person, I'm, I'm, if I'm, you just wander into this movie, you're like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> there was that problem before in like the 2000s where like WWE were at like three pay-per-views in one month. They were like, yo, well, how am I going to find enough time to do this and like watch like three WWE shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people can't just like have this endless deluge of content, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's got to be a breaking point, you know? Yeah. But like somehow like, and like, you know, that... To be fair, this was what we were signing up for with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Because, like, TV shows are something you just have long-term fans follow infinitely. Yeah. Manga series are, you know, you just... It's easier to just have a show go on for 30 years than yeah. it is to start a new series. Yeah. It's easier to have fans of Simpsons watch it for 30 years than start a new series. Yeah. It's easy, And then, like, they brought the techniques of television, serialized television into film with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. And then they just started off this whole kind of a treadmill of like, well, now we have to do this whole thing for like movies for like over a decade now. And they just have to keep it rolling. And they've like been able to milk that like really, really well. And this is just what we signed up for ourselves up for as fans and stuff. And not only that, Disney has been able to parlay that into like synergy with now their deals with other companies and Fox and like, 
you know, now like Quicksilver or whatever. And, you know, now we have weight and we can like throw our weight around with Sony and this Sony this and this Sony that. And so it's actually kind of this huge, like, it's kind of overwhelming, really. I guess they could do Fantastic Four Homecoming also, right? Yeah, I with mean, those like, three some, people, those three universes. some people said, like, there was, like, one line in, like, you know, uh, in, like, uh, Endgame that, like, someone said was, like, that could imply Fantastic Four somehow because oh, there's yeah, a planet yeah. that involves a weird signature reading. And they're, like, oh, man, I'm going crazy as a fan. And, like, oh, my God. They literally said nothing. And, like, they just they're just teasing you. Just to see how many people are going to go crazy for it. So they can like build hype if they want to do it. They just put... It's more teasers. It's more tie-ins. It's more Matt Murdocks. It's more post-credit sequences. Like the post-credit sequences don't even have to do with the movie anymore. They just have to do with like setting up more things now. And like... Yeah. Or I mean I'm going to keep watching it as this sad thing. But oh. like I got to admit. But like... Yeah it's kind of exhausting. And like maybe it's just going to be... I know, yeah. I also don't know if there, there's been a lot of films, Marvel films recently, just because of the pandemic, or if they just they just have a lot of them are scheduled for around this time. They have a lot of them. They, they have, have like Shang Chi, Black Widow, Shang Chi, Black Widow, uh, Spider Man, Sort of Venom, not they really. Sort of Venom, Eternals, Eternals was this yeah. year too. Forgot about Eternals. There's probably another one that I forgot about it. It's all over from like half a year or something. They also had all those TV shows come out this year on Disney Plus. Yeah. WandaVision, Hawkeye, Loki. Loki. Uh, there's probably another one I'm forgetting. Fal- Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm sure that was this year or last year. Yeah, and then they tied this into WandaVision, too. So you have to keep up with all the TV shows, too. Yeah. Like, this was... And, like, they literally reference Westview, which is a reference to WandaVision, the show. I, yeah, I didn't remember that, yeah. So, like... You gotta protect myself from me or whatever it was, yeah. So, like, yeah, they're literally acknowledging, like, yeah, you have to be following every literally everything. Oh, oh joy. <laughs> so yeah maybe that's like a huge like we just spent a half an hour just ranting about how much there is to rant about in terms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe yeah that's a whole thing worth ranting about too yep. and it honestly is worth the time talking about that because it is a huge issue slash thing I don't know if it's an issue exactly but it's right. a whole, it is definitely part of the equation part of the equation yes and it's just going to be continue becoming a thing until they start doing multiverse stuff to start paring it down or whatever. Right. They're probably going to do a reboot at some point. That'd be another multiverse or whatever. And they do a, no, a new universe. And then, like, I, I and then like, with that universe, then they do the, tie-ins back to this universe. That, that's actually whatever. sort of what they did with Spider-Man in this movie. Um, yeah, that's what they did, yeah. Um, so they... there's, there's, there's he's, a, ba- he's back to the Tobey Maguire, yeah. Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, where he's like, yeah. great power, great responsibility. So, yeah. Uh, like, I can't tell them my secret, because, like, the last three films, <laughs> everybody my secret. So this is just, like, them dabbling with the, the idea of a multiverse... And then they're just going to continue dabbling with it in future movies and stuff. Yeah. So they're just going to keep, like, dealing with this kind of issue. And this is the... And, like, also already... They've already started to do that in the TV shows and stuff, too. So, yeah. All right. That's probably enough for that. Yeah. Um, All right. Any last words? Um, Yeah. Overall, pretty good. But, yeah, exhausting because it's huge multiverse stuff. And Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um... I really like what they did with the veteran actors. It was a little rough in the beginning, but they definitely had very strong moments of uh, just some wholesome warmness. Yeah. Wholesome. Uh, do you want to elaborate on that? Like veteran actors and stuff? Big Ben, and like. Uh, Big Ben? Uh, sorry, uh, Uncle Ben, and like uh, just chemistry and remembering what was actually in their films and stuff. Who's that? Uh, what, the moments when they're talking about Uncle Ben? When they're like. Being the new, when they're like being five figures to each other and stuff well, there's yeah. a lot of five figures with that like there's even yeah. some of that with like Dr. Octopus and like Norman Osborn yeah the show than that with the lizard um yeah the Sandman himself is a father yeah there's a lot of I guess dad. Electro not so much this, this series is uh, a lot Electro of, is more like like, like a brother yeah like a <laughs> a lot of dad feelings in this movie and then like Electro is like the brother yeah he's, yeah. he's like Electro and like or maybe like Amazing Spider Man is like Electro's father or something. And then Willem Dafoe is like Evil Dad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole. 
with Harry study Osborn. On, there's a whole study on like Norman Osborn's personality, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like his relationship with the characters in the show, like yeah. the comics and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of great moments, great drama, great chemistry. Great special effects for the Doctor Strange it's, stuff. It's a love story, great st- action sequences, great visual effects. Great in 3D, made oh, a lot yeah. of money. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it deserves the money, yeah. I don't know. The crowd might have been a little bit unnatural, but I didn't think it's too overwhelming. It's a good movie. I felt like, I felt like I was able to pretty much follow it. It felt like as like overwhelming as Civil War was. Um, but like, I was able, but I enjoy, I think it was just enough for me to enjoy it. I don't think you need a lot. I enjoyed it a I, lot. I feel like if you don't like any Marvel stuff, I don't think this will help you out. A bit, I feel like just watching Molina and like such veteran actors and like, like, people, the Spider-Man reprise their roles, I think is good enough, even if you don't like Marvel that much. Who's Molina? Uh, Dr. Octopus. Oh, Alfred Molina. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you meant, like, Molina from Mortal Kombat. Yeah, there you go, yeah. <laughs> okay. Dr. Octopus, sure. finish, finish him. <laughs> get over here. <laughs> yeah, get over here. That, that's what Dr. Octopus would do, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, they, yeah, really solid movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, it definitely gets the... Two thumbs... I, I give it a thumbs up. Um, I'm still deciding. Uh, I, I probably need another it, reviewing. I give it a big thumbs up. Okay. All right. All right, cool. All right. All right, signing off. Moody the heart. Signing off. PR PhD. All right, take it easy. Take it easy. Bye. Do it. So am I doing Moody the heart then? Yeah, go so, ahead. Okay, I'm Moody the heart. Yeah. And then... PR PhD. Okay, and we're talking about Spider-Man... We don't know the, <laughs> we don't know what the title of the movie is. Homecoming, no way home. Homecoming far, three, far, I guess. Far, Homecoming far, three. Homecoming across three. Over. The Zendaya one. <laughs> the Zendaya universe. <laughs> and Ned Zendaya and Ned Spider Man. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's already <laughs> been like an Infinity War in between these Spider Man movies, and then now there's like into now, the Spider Verse. Now there's a multiverse. There's been a lot going on, and then this somehow this is like somehow these are still. These three Spider-Man movies in between all this stuff going on. Okay, so we don't have the Spider-Man from uh, the cartoon, the Spider- Into the Spider-Verse cartoon, right? Yeah, Into the Spider-Verse is its own multiverse movie with yeah. like 12 Spider-Man in it. Which I thought was a mess. But now this one has three Spider-Man in it. I don't think that's a, hu- mess, yeah. that's, I don't think that's a huge spoiler to say that this movie has three Spider-Man in it. It's the premise of the movie that I think everyone pretty much knows. Sorry. Probably should, but I'll put spoiler alert, don't worry about it. Okay, but it's, just to let you know, it's... The, 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 the movie made a billion dollars, that's why everyone watched it. Yeah. It's made a billion dollars. It's probably people 30 years from now, like, wait, I don't watch it yet. Like, yeah. no one spoiled that for me. It's like, someone revealing to me that someone is, someone in Psycho. It's two weeks in, it's made a billion dollars. Yeah. People, we still saw it in a theater where people were still kind of packed. Yeah. It was an indie Omicron, theater because like Omicron, no one in else an, in an indie theater during Omicron. It was the only movie this whole year movie. that made a billion dollars. Only movie that is the biggest pandemic smash hit. That's <laughs> part of like, achievement. There you go. <laughs> That's where we got to. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a good movie. <laughs> Very commercial success. Yeah. There you go. Um, and yeah, um, it, it's about these three Peter Parkers. And like I don't do, even do, do 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 do. They just walking around. <laughs> hey, I'm Peter Parker. I'm Peter Parker. I'm Peter Parker. It's Peter the Parker meme too. where they're all pointing at each other. <laughs> oh, you, you, you. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, they. they it's Ed, Ed, and Eddie, except it's Pete, Pete, and Petey. Pete, Pete, and Petey. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess we'll start off from the beginning and go. Well, anyway, what are your general impressions, and then we'll go chronologically in the movie. That sounds about right. Okay, um, so general impressions, yeah. I watched it twice actually. Um, you the first it time, the first time was actually a lot that. better. The second, okay. the second time, that that start was really rough. So I don't know how to grade it. Okay, but like it got better as the movie went along. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay, that's your assessment. You yeah. liked it better as it went along. Yeah. I watched. Th- this was my first time watching it, and I watched it in a the theater. I didn't watch it bootleg or whatever, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, so, I don't, or not, <laughs> uh, however one may have attempted to watch the movie legally by, uh, legitimate means and whatnot, um, whoever may be doing that, um, but, uh, I don't know, everybody, 
<laughs> twirling my mustache. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> you're one of those villains in, in the movie. From one of those alternate universes where that's allowed. This is a crime, you know, as they say in the big thing before you watch the movie. Anyway. They don't even have that, yeah. They don't even do that anymore. <laughs> anyway. Um, but I watched it in the theater. I enjoyed it a lot. But I got to say, going into this movie, there are a lot of gaps. One, I did not watch the amazing Spider-Man <laughs> Spider-Man movies. So I kind of had to piece together all those characters and stuff and like... Gwen Stacy and stuff like that. I had to figure that out. And they, I guess that watching this movie spoiled those movies for me a little bit. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, that's okay. I don't mind it because I don't view it as that much of a loss. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, uh, um, and then I, also, I, also, I watch all of them. Also, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For yeah, the most yeah. Part. I'll I, sign like some yeah. TV shows. I also did not watch the second. To uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man movie, No Way Home. I think I watched it. I don't remember anything about it. I, I don't remember liking it. <laughs> I didn't watch it. Uh, it was right after Endgame. I didn't watch it. And apparently this follows right from that. But basically, at the very beginning of this, it leads into this. And, uh, yeah. It's, that's my impression of it, is what I understand. I don't Me like too, because I don't remember the second film after I watched it. Seems I like barely remember Jake Gyllenhaal was in it. I mean, He've been this whole this thing, like, oh, he betrayed DC because he was originally supposed to be the Batman Begins Batman, but, like, yeah, so he ended up as Quentin Beck for some odd reason. Just because, so whatever. So be, he, my understanding is that Mysterio is a big deal. <laughs> and that's all I know about that second movie. I don't, I don't, I don't really all. remember anything else about the movie. There's drones. Oh, my gosh. Drones. Mysterio. Magic Mysterio Man. That's a... I, I don't know anything. So I feel like those things... Given those things, everything else, I follow all the Marvel Cinematic stuff. I've seen all the Tobey Maguire movies. I feel like that was enough for me to kind of piece together what was going on. So I was movie. confused. Like, this, this is a big spoiler. Not a big spoiler, but it's like later on in the film. Yeah. But I'm going to mention it now before I forget. Okay. They mentioned like... Oh, I met this purple alien in space or something. Yeah. I thought he was talking about Quentin Beck and not Thanos. <laughs> no, they're talking about Thanos. Because like, there's so much to keep track of. And yeah. like, they don't, you don't see Thanos. He's not visually there. It's just in dialogue. Yeah. There's a lot of cute scenes where like all the Spider-Men are talking to and each other. There's like 50 films like between these universes. There's all the Spider-Men talking to each other about like, Oh, what was it like in your universe? What was it like in your universe? <laughs> And, like, that was one of the scenes where they were talking about, like, you know, I, I met a space alien. Wow, I never got to go into space. You went into space. So that was cute. They did their... They did, you got to get those jokes in there. It's fun. There's a funny line so, about the Avengers, and they're, and they're, like, and which I'll back to it later, yeah. The bonding's pretty good, yeah. So the bonding's good. I, I, it's all, like, a lot of... It feels like kind of fan service but they do it well. I felt like it's, it's, it's very story-related. The chemistry is good. The chemistry is there. Yeah. It also serves the story because the characters are bonding before, like, all the lost. Happening. This guy, that person, that person. They're all bonding over their shared experiences being like different versions of Peter Parker because yeah. they have to keep telling the same story, which is basically the kind yeah, of the there's a, there's a thing I have about that. Yeah. There's a thing I have about that. It's not, I guess, the movie, but just like... There's creativity issues. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I guess, like, where do we want to go from here? Do we just want to go chronologically or do we want to still kind of talk about, like overall structural things about the uh can we go chronologically but skip the whole beginning prior to what causes the crossover not quite that but like why okay because i i just I get have... so annoyed and like i don't feel like i'll it'll be pleasant for me to talk about it like um i, I don't really understand but you can do whatever you want i guess like I'll roll with it i'll just put this like uh Maybe from Doc Ock onward. Do you mean like... When he gets introduced. Uh, okay. Do you want to talk... So do you want to avoid all the stuff that involves like... Him going to Doctor Strange and stuff like that? Or everything before that or whatever? I think that's certain extent. Because I, I, was, I was really annoyed with that part of the film. <laughs> Are you in no... Okay, sh can I talk about that a little bit? Like, right, just, yeah, like, yeah. What I remember you talking about that. I, you, okay. Maybe you should talk about that. I don't know. I could describe it. that premise. Okay, yeah. The premise of that sets off the events of this, which I think I understand why, because it's annoying, because he's being immature. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, like, maybe it's really hard for a young person to be immature about this. And then, like, maybe it's kind of like a bad reason for setting up the whole events of this movie. 
Because, like, yeah. in Endgame, like, 50% of the whole population got wiped out. He's like, oh, people know it's Spider-Man. That's the worst thing ever. Like, so, yeah, the, the basic premise thing that sets off this movie is that at the end of the second movie, I didn't even see it, apparently, it's revealed that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. And then this causes Peter Parker's life to spin out of control because everyone knows who he is. His friends get involved and know, and they get taken down to they get like not canceled but like everyone knows who they are his family gets involved they don't get into mit or whatever and then oh, oh no it's, a, then, it's, my, it's my worst nightmare i can't i can't go to mit man so i'm gonna live myself so so then this is so them not being able to go to mit is, it's what, causes, it's my life. is what causes peter parker to decide to go to dr strange to say hey I need you to cast a magic spell that causes the whole world to change. <laughs> the whole universe. The not even the world, the whole universe. The whole universe to change. Because Just in case, like, like, Thanos is, like, long lost star of who Spider-Man is. Yeah, I mean, like, given, like, how... It does feel, like, pretty out of character for, like, you know, pretty much every other Spider-Man has to deal with some version of, like, either keeping their secret identity and suffering from that or having some other identity come out and then, like, suffering the consequences of that. But, like... This one, he, like, tries to avoid the consequences, and then they just go with it, and then it sets up the premise, and then that's... I could see why that would be annoying. But that kind of sets the things in motion for this movie. And then, it, furthermore, when he does the spell... He keeps he annoying fucks, him? He fucks like, up the spell. He's like, that's strange, right? Don't do that! Don't do that! So, like, so not only does he, like, not allow this... Cause that he requests the spell to be cast by Doctor Strange. He doesn't want to cast it. He messes up the spell by asking more and more and more and more, and then screwing up the spell a million times, and then and then that's what causes all the multiverses to collapse, and then that sets so the premise of the movie, where all these characters are showing up and stuff. Maybe Spider Man should be the villain of the next Avengers film, where he just like tells Doctor Strange to. Cast a spell, but he's like, no, I'm not the spell specifically. And then everything gets screwed up. That you mean like there's like an evil version of these characters that like no, no, I mean like or something. No, like, I mean like it's, it's like normal Spider-Man. At least from this movie, not the other two, which he's not that bad in. He's pretty good in the other two films, even. But like, this film, he's like, that's strange. I need you to cast a spell for me, except like I'm gonna make you screw it up so that it screws up the entire universe and multiverses. He's doing that on purpose. Yes, that's the premise of the fifth Avengers Wonder Woman we're at now. That's an alternate Spider-Man or something? No, that's the Spider-Man in this universe. <laughs> okay, you just prefer that to be... Okay, yeah. you're just making a joke. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, but, uh, yeah, so that's why Cascade stuff, and then, like, he goes to get the MIT. So are we just following story-wise? Okay. So, like, yeah, then eventually they introduce Dr. Octopus... That's in the trailer for this movie. It's in the poster. It's in the poster. Like, he's like, 90% of the poster is just Dr. Octopus arms. Yeah, he's actually kind of not in the movie that much. Because there's like 20 characters in the movie. In <laughs> and like, most of the movie, he's like in a box or whatever. And like, yeah, and then like... I don't know, I'm doing like pretty full spoiler mode now at this point, but... I'm probably the warning, don't worry about it. Okay. So, um... I like, most of the stuff that happened, like, happened in Spider-Man 2. Like, yeah. we're just... Feeding off that movie, basically. Like, he has... No yeah, Spider-Man 2. So, like, a lot of... Yeah, a lot of it's Spider-Man 2, yeah. Oh. Um, and then... Yeah. They introduce Dr. Octopus. Then, like, that kicks off the events of, like... So that kicks off the next sequence of events, which is, like... Okay. Sp Spider-Man has somehow caused these multiverses to collide. So now he has to go on this mission of gathering all these baddies together... In order to, like, put them back to where they belong... So then they start to encounter the other characters. So Dr. Octopus, uh, Green Goblin, Electro, Sandman, Mr. Lizard. <laughs> Mr. That? Lizard, Mr. yes. Mr. Lizard. Mr. Lizard. What the hell was his name? Lizard Man? What the fuck is his name? Dr. Lizard? Liz <laughs> Mr. Lizard. The fuck? The Lizard? The Lizard. That's all it is. It's it's not not that's even labor. It's a stupid name. <laughs> So can you blame me for saying that? I'm Mr. Freeze. Are you a doctor, Mr. Freeze? The lizard. The lizard's also a doctor. You should be Dr. Lizard. You should be Dr. Lizard. He's a doctor. He's a doctor. He's a doctor. How do all these Spider-Man villains are doctors? Dr. Yeah, Dr. Octopus. Dr. Lizard. Dr. Octopus. Also, also, like... Green Electro's probably a lizard. 